Hmm. <laughs> What's your time to Valpo? Probably about that, I would think. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. Anyway, well, perhaps well, do you know they... what we didn't do today. We didn't start the show. Oh, yeah, we didn't. Like we never said. You're... Hey, Bob. What are we doing today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is just going to be random episode, episode twenty-two, the random episode. Yeah. So full disclosure, we've just been busy with life and work, right? Or, yeah, work's been insane, and we've both been traveling. Some for not really for work, but yes, for work. Sorry, I'm getting attacked again here. <laughs> attacked by his dog. Not really. Oh, it is episode twenty-two. Look at me knowing that off the top of my head. Wow. All right. Well. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> 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 this is gonna be an editing nightmare. Nope. No, it's I not. Say totally leave it in. <laughs> it's not gonna be an editing nightmare at all. I don't think I'm gonna touch it. Um, all right. All right. Upload Bob. it and. Um, I'll say, uh, bring the lightning and then I'll just, go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and we'll like do some weird edit when I say, Hey Bob, what are we doing today? And you know, and then yeah. we'll have like this weird cold open and we'll not sh- be sure where to put the music or maybe uh, we'll... there's spots. Uh, it'll be fine. I'll, right. uh, I'll edit it. No worries. Um, and I'll use that bring the lightning that I just said, or that one, or bring the lightning. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one. That's kind of like your like movie guy voice. So yeah. into that one. Any or all of the above. Uh, do me a favor and say, hey, Bob, what are we talking about today? Hey, Bob, what are we doing today? Perfect. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I, think, I think that's the cold open right there. You are listening to the Bob and Kevin Show with Bob Beatty Bar and Kevin Gusheski. Each week, we cover relevant tech and social issues related to technology. And more weeks than not, we're joined by special guests to add additional perspective to our topics. Our website is bobandkevin.show. And our episodes can be found on virtually any podcast network. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search for Bob and Kevin Show. Together, huh? Yes, I only ha- I've only had a cup of coffee at Nuveen Investments. Did I ever tell you that story? Uh, no, I've only had a cup of coffee at one place too, and I'm I wish I didn't even have that. <laughs> it was in the city. I had to commute, so I would go in really early, and I would go in early, and then I would leave it, catch the four thirty train. Actually, it wasn't even the four thirty train. It was like the five oh four train. Got me home a little bit before six or something like that. And my boss came up to me at one point very early on. He goes, "Um, do you want to be known as the 430 guy? And I'm like, I could give a shit because I'm... Oh, no. It's it's the... It's the, do you want to be known as the two pieces of flair guy? <laughs> From right, but yeah. I was like, I don't even care. I'm here at six o'clock and this place is empty. So to get here at six o'clock, it means I take the 505 train. Wow. So, so yeah. I'll go home at 4.30 and I'll feel okay about that. <laughs> wow, I can't believe they, uh, they they dropped that one on you. When I uh, worked up north in South Bend, they uh, they let me flex. to. I, w- I showed up at 7.30, went home at 4.30, but in order to get there at 7.30, I had to be on the road by about 5.30, 6. Well, this, this was a couple years ago. I mean, more than a couple years ago. So maybe the environment. Well, did you see the... Did you see that Twitter thread the other day that I was kind of involved in? I think Chris had started it. She was talking about some work-life balance stuff and it kind of morphed into that, you know, that sprint culture, you know, like wearing that I've worked 75 million hours this week as a badge of honor conversation and how Mm -hmm. to combat that. The short answer is no, I did not see that thread, but I'm curious. Well, I just uh, some differing opinions. And I think someone who jumped into the conversation was um, a project manager and kind of threw out like, well, what if it's an, what if it's critical that people put in the time? And my reply was, that's an opportunity to evaluate what 
what made it critical that everyone had to be all hands on deck or a solitary employee had to be hands on deck for an extreme amount of time. You know, there was a, there's a total flip side of the conversation too. It's like, Hey, have you read the four hour work week? And you know, a lot of that shit is just garbage because that's all about creating passive income streams and stuff like that. So. So I, I think critical and working after hours, there's a temporal uh, component of how much time are we doing that? So if we're doing it once in a blue moon and speak, and it's very rare, I would have zero problems with it. If it becomes consistent, whatever consistent is, I guess, twice in a short period of time. Now we have a pattern and I would be like, okay, guys, um, what the? what the fuck? <laughs> and so, yeah. Right. Full disclosure though. I was afraid to throw this unpopular opinion into the ring. What if you like dig being that person who saves the team all the time? And because of that, you choose to put in those hours. So that's a great question. Cause I've struggled with this because I can, I think we all have the ability to be, a superhero. The problem with that is if you're consistently a superhero working extra, you know, doing all these things, it starts setting the standard where it shouldn't be. It, it, right. ri- it raises that bar to, well, crap. Well, Timmy over there doesn't work as hard as Kevin or Bob over there. So um, yeah, what's, what's the deal, Timmy? Uh, I guess you're going to be the first one to get canned. Where Timmy actually has a great work-life balance and he's probably looking at us going, what the fuck, guys? You're making me look bad. But it's totally like false, you know? So I've struggled with that myself where it's like, I can, but I shouldn't. And here's why. Right. And, Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. And um, so spinning, actually, I saw another Twitter thread and uh, DAH was involved in it, but it was the 996 thread. Have you seen that one? Where yeah. you work 996 hours or day, oh, it can't be days, but 996 something. It basically equates to 60 to 70 hours a week. It's the YOLO, be a retired by age 30 something, you know, just this, this intense life where apparently this is a big deal in China. And, um, you know, it was the flame war of you're stupid uh, because DAH and, and the uh, base camp people have that book. Like it doesn't have to be crazy at work. Um, right. That did get brought up as in that thread that I was part of as well. So what's T A H? David Heinemeyer Hansen. He's a Danish oh, guy who started yeah, yeah. 37 Signals Base Camp. Yeah, race yeah, car yeah. driver. Yeah. Way better looking than me. I kind of kind of jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Well, no, that and that was a common theme too. It's like, yeah, so you could put in you could put in the hours, you could put in the hustle, and then you could be in that position where you don't have to, or do you pace yourself like, you know, yeah. to go balls yeah. to the wall from the get go. So we went to uh, Breckenridge, Colorado for our uh, retreat. I don't know if it's an annual retreat. It's our first retreat because <laughs> tonic is new ish. It's only a couple years old, three years, I think. And we're to the level now or, Hey, let's have an employee retreat. And when I say we, I mean the owner. So we, we have an official CEO now and a CTO and um, it was really great. They took great care of us. But in Breckenridge, Colorado, you can imagine the, well, you've been to Frisco, right? You can imagine the opulence just everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Well, one <laughs> reason why I like Frisco, though, is because it's kind of got a little bit of up and down. Like, yeah, it's a pretty exclusive area, but there's some pretty, like, middle-of-the-road stuff there, too. It's not, it's not a ski town like Breckenridge is. Well, we stayed in a, on a mountain neighborhood, <laughs> Each house that we stayed in, uh, I think we're purpose built for Airbnb or something. I mean, it wasn't, there was no personal photos, but it was also in the N number of millions of oh, yeah. dollars, right? So um, I guess I'll never probably see that side of love. And I guess this ties into, um, it's nice to visit and it would be great if I could have that kind of money, but I don't. That's okay, because I don't either, but you'll be Uh-oh. able to visit. You'll wow, be able are you to still visit. with me? I am still with you, Hmm, but you're yellow. Oh, hello? Uh, uh, I, I killed my video. I see that. <laughs> Mr. Editor. All right, so I don't know where I was in that, but long story short, if you work 996 hours or whatever, it was crazy amount because that's your goal, I guess you're going to win, and I'm not, and that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, but that, I mean, 
that hours doesn't equate to financial freedom though. Apparently like, some people definitely believe that. Well, I guess you have to believe something, but I mean, 996 hours times, you know, especially if you're a salaried employee, even 996 hours times a hundred thousand dollars a year, <laughs> you're still only making a hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. So, yeah. Um, you know, uh, one, one good piece of advice I did pull out of this giant flame war thread was if you're not making money while you're sleeping, you're never going to reach the level of financial independence. Right. And, and that's back to that passive income thing. So, right. And shit, I would love to make money while I sleep. Who wouldn't? Um, but obviously I haven't cracked that egg. Speaking of making money while we sleep, um, <laughs> Uh -oh. We did. We did. I don't think we've talked since we passed a thousand listens. Uh, um, we, yeah. For people listening, that's totally tongue in cheek because there is no income generated from this fantastic podcast. By the way, in fact, but, we're more like a money pit of stickers, bandwidth. Yes. I still need to mail you stickers too. By the way, it would have been really smart of me to do that before you went to Colorado, but not bad. Uh, yeah, uh, totally forgot. No big deal. But yeah, we had a thousand. So congrats to you, Mister Vady Bar, uh, best uh, producer in the business. <laughs> So, good job. Yes, yes. That's what's got us those listens. I think it's the uh, hustle on social media. Um, so, yeah. So, we move toward the next goal. I think, uh, you know, obviously that next plateau is 2,000. But um, right. I think five is probably the – get that 5,000 listens and get that – I don't know what even episode we're on, 21? Does that sound you right? Know, to nerd it up, I, I propose our goals be the Fibonacci sequence. So one, one, two, you know, uh, you know, you just add previous. So it's an exponential curve. So, so I, okay. I propose we You've just been go. Promoted. You've been promoted to goal setter then. Cause I don't know what the Fibonacci curve is. So I, I think our next one should just be 2000. And then after that, I think we'll be at three and then we'll be at five. And then it really starts taking off from there. So is it um, one, one, two or one, one, one? Well, I'll let you wiki uh, that. And there is two ones at the beginning, I do believe, but we can uh, just. So then we would go one, two, five then, right? One, I believe it's one, two, three, five. Because uh, you add the previous two numbers together it is the Fibonacci sequence. I typed in FIB and it was the third thing that came up in the Google, uh, also known as the Fibonacci series. Nice. We use Fibonacci for um, like agile difficulty. So every number you go higher has to be a Fibonacci number, meaning it's that much harder than your previous thoughts of for, just for sizing. It, it, it's useful. So we've got zero, one, one, two, three, five. Yep. So eight, 3, 13, 21. Yep. yep. Uh, so that's what I proposed. That should be our goals. All right. We will follow the Fibonacci sequence then. And, and that is definitely exponential nonlinear. So uh, our goals should go up quite a bit. No pressure. No pressure. All right. So a uh, quick question. Uh, totally off topic here. I hear some uh, childlike voices in the background. Yes. Uh, are the kids going uh, trick or treating today? They are not. Um Pretty sure while I was in uh, the mountains, um, the local city had kind of safe hours during the weekend. So they are not going tonight. In fact, what we're going to do, I think, is dress them up and go out to a restaurant that gives free meals for dressed up kids. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a life hack right there. It is. So um, I don't think you have any trick-or-treating ages, and I don't see you wearing any sort of uh, outfit at the moment. So I'm assuming it's a, been a pretty passive one, right? Yeah, actually, trick-or-treat here starts in about uh, 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes. So I don't know if I'm on candy duty or not. I, ha I do have a 17-year-old daughter that can handle the candy handing out duties. Nice. Candy handing out duties. Yes, that is what I said. Nice. But yeah, so uh, does that mean that they're not doing trick or treat in Columbia City, Indiana, right now? Or I don't believe so. Um, that would be a bad time to rob a bank because you might think all the cops are out doing safety, but they're not. They're probably guarding the banks. I wonder how many communities don't do it on Halloween. That's very interesting. 
it's pretty standard around here. It depends if it falls on a weekday or a weekend. Uh, same with Fourth of July. We'll we'll slide the fireworks to the closest weekend, I believe. Oh wow, like we're that. purists around here. It's, it's on the day, or else nothing. On the, on the day as the good Lord intended it. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, so what's new? Uh, we'll go with what's new in tech and what's new in non-tech. So let's start with what's new in tech, Mr. Baby Bar. Oh, man. Like what's new with me personally or what's new in the world? Um, that's a grab bag. You can you can say some watered down work thing that's bugging you. You can pull Facebook um, is is doing this whole, hey, we, we did the whole, you know, data breach thing. Now we want to sell you a camera. Um, so it's up to you. Oh man. So yeah, put a pin in that one for sure. Um, so a personal rant though, tech wise, I need some new toys. I haven't gotten any new toys in forever. So, uh, So, so, um, the only new toy that I've gotten is non-tech related. I, I got some <laughs> drawing figures to help me do some art, digital artwork on my iPad and I've decided to do some working out. So I've been, been forcing myself to work out at least once a day. Then I wait, wait, up wait, for... wait. You're being physical? Yeah. About yeah. time. Congrats. Not mental push-ups, right? I, I do enough of those. I, uh, I joined the basketball uh, program. So we got my first game on Saturday. Easy. Take it slow, man. I don't want you to hurt yourself. <laughs> And then on Sunday, I have to perform, or, well, Saturday morning, I have to go to a, a music practice where I'm playing bass and guitar in a, in a group. And I have the following Sunday to perform already. So <laughs> ambition is going to kill are me. Are you playing in a church band? I, uh, I am, um, just to see how it goes and pass the time, if nothing else. So, Josh started his musical career playing in a church band. So good wow. things come of it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the local church. Um, I got I got to stay involved in the the tiny community as I can. So that's that's one thing that I did. Ooh, technology wise, I've actually tried to mitigate my Twitter use almost as much as possible. Wait, 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 wait. Why? Back to the. I think we've talked about it before. Social media is kind of addicting. Um, I guess that's the worst thing. And then secondly, it, it's a lot of source of just angst I have against just the world in general. <laughs> um, yeah, but you had such a, you have such a prolific Twitter account. Like your tweets per minute are like infinitely higher than mine. Well, that may be, but you're killing me on the followers. So I guess I'm getting the <laughs> nobody cares well, vibe on my account. <laughs> I just don't delete my porn spam bots. That's all. <laughs> Ah, gotcha. Um, well, it's funny because um, I've, I've made a concerted effort to tweet about positive things only. I'm, I'm now no longer giving a shit. I'm, I don't want to get involved in any arguments. I don't. I'm, uh, I'm like, oh, for pick a number <laughs> for winning these, and I really don't need to win them anyway. I don't care. Yeah, but I was saying most of those arguments aren't even. Uh winnable they're they're online debates right yeah so neil degrasse tyson and others have mentioned if you can't if neither side can win an argument in the first five minutes you're both somehow flawed wrong <laughs> so i mean there's a few things yes when people say wait a second what about you know insert inflammatory topic here yes you're correct but in general during a civil conversation that isn't doesn't have your typical uh right and wrong if you can't prove your point and convince the other person you're, you're both probably not going to convince each other of anything. Well, all right, let's, let's peel that back though. Is the point of an argument to change somebody else's mind? No, but I think there has to be an air of willingness to concede to the other person's uh, position. Otherwise you are waiting for your turn to talk and, or just talking louder. So if, if you, in, if in you, you're not willing to change your position, then it, it is by definition un winnable argument and you probably should even have it but okay all right all right this is good I threw a lot what, of grenades at you there <laughs> what if i'm not willing to change my position because of my conversation with you but i've collected data and basically created my pros v cons column you know just to oversimplify things right in several conversations down the line 
I have a collection of data which does actually sway the way I behave about that topic in the future. Well, I mean, I, I think at bare minimum, even a minuscule amount, you have to have the ability to see somebody else's point. You have to have to be able to actively listen. And if not, all you're doing is evangelizing your point and you're trying to prophesize, gosh, I can't say that word, your position and try to create, try to spread your word without any option of uh, altering your own. And we got a lot of those on Twitter and that's fine. I just don't want to engage with those people. <laughs> right. All. But if you take yourself out of the conversation, then do, once again, this is my personal view on it. If you take yourself out of the conversation, then you're hindering the growth of the community. Fill in the um, blank. Your community is fill in the blank. You could, you could say that. I mean, let's pick a tough topic, guns or, or abortion or something crazy, you know, where people just aren't going to believe each other. Um, I just don't want to be in those conversations because there's just going to be a lot of yelling. There's going to be a lot of retweets, a lot of, a lot of likes, and it's going to be me versus you type thing. And we'll solve nothing. And the only thing I'll, I will net gain in that is grief. And so I choose my topics carefully, but I really think Twitter is a shitty place to argue anything anymore. Well, right. And I don't, I don't often engage in, even like adversarial conversations. I, I, I mean, if we want to argue tabs for spaces, I'll go, I'll go toe to toe with you on Twitter. <laughs> okay. But so on the is, so yeah. there is a spectrum. Okay. Yeah. So as that spectrum tw uh, moves towards people are stuck in their beliefs, I'm just, there's just no, there's just no way. I'm, I'm not going to do that. There's also, I guess, um, maybe a third, maybe it's a triangle instead of just a linear thing. There's seeing things both ways and neither one are right or wrong. Um, task for spaces is, is probably that sort of thing, but, um, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm trying to use Twitter less. And the way I'm doing that is I, I've been uninstalled Twitter before, but this time I just took away the, um, the shortcut. So it's, it's harder to find. So when I'm sitting around going, gee, what should I do with my phone right here? You know, it's not staring at me. So that that's mitigation. Number one, um, mitigation number two is actively find something else that matters and go do that. Um, but what I was actually interested in is Twitter actually providing me with the ability to say, you know what, 30 minutes, Kevin, that's all you get today. And when it's up, we're locking you out across all devices. See you tomorrow after midnight. What do you think about that? Well, I think that some of the newer cell, cellular devices, new phones, I don't know why I said cellular devices, the new phones have that built into their operating system or the new operating system. But that's a, that's at a phone level, not necessarily at an app. I, I'm looking well, at an app level. The app level is never going to do that. That'd be like cutting off their face. Well, you, you did see Jack is flirting around with getting rid of the like button out of Twitter, right? Yeah, I think Jack's got bigger fish to fry than the freaking like button. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have <laughs> seen. It's like, you can get rid of the like button, but you can't get rid of Nazis. You know, Right, exactly. <laughs> I, I get all that. Um, did you remember Twitter before retweeting? Cause, no, cause that, that wasn't not. actually a day zero ship uh, feature. I don't know if like was, but re retweet definitely wasn't. I think like was day one. It could have been, but it, it just seems so mind blowing that they're willing to get rid of the like button. It's like, what? But I, I kind of understand it because how, how swayed are you sometimes just by looking at somebody's opinion and going, Oh my gosh, like the army of likes behind that one or retweets. And clearly I don't want to oppose that even though I do don't agree with it. Yeah, but okay, so that's an excellent instance. So like button. I don't necessarily use it as a like button. I'll use it as right. a save for later button. I'll use it as a, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's not necessarily just a like button for me. Um, so, and to be honest, when I'm looking at other people's content, I don't see that. Like it's actually gray. Really? You know, the likes, the retweets. Oh, the, right. oh you're just saying mentally you, you filter it out. But I mean, I actually think in the UI, in the UI, it's gray. Like I use um, TweetDeck. So yeah. it's 
underneath and it's lighter. Wow, are you guys having an earthquake there or something? <laughs> it's my dog sitting okay. right next to me. She's excited. I heard you snap at something and I didn't know if it was the kids or the dog. Apparently you snapped at the dog. Yes, the sorry kids, about that. It would only be something I would do. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're, we're recording this. Um, the kids are home from school. The dogs are sitting right next to me. So this won't please any audio files, but uh, pretty sure we listen to other podcasts where they ha- get attacked by their cats and things like that. Ooh, that was gauntlet throw. Yeah. Don't, don't add a start date supplement. Brothers Weems. <laughs> <laughs> See if anyway. they made it this far. I'm, I'm not going to put in any uh, girl from Ipanema <laughs> music there. All right. So I'm scrolling through my Twitter followers and guess what? I don't have any porn bots following me right now. That's quite disappointing, actually. Oh, man. I'm, I'm certain I have at least a handful because I usually chat. I'm just curious and who's following me and somebody does. I'm like, uh, yeah, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Are you supposed to block those? Because if I don't, is that like padding my stats? No, because I don't typically do anything with them either. But apparently they get bored and move on. I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, it seems most of my followers actually fall into my major life categories of uh, web dev and uh, community engagement. <laughs> wow. <Sorry. laughs> right. We've got a bark. Now. We got a bark. Oh, no. Terrible podcast. Terrible podcast. Okay. All right. So Twitter, yeah, I'm trying to mitigate it. I would like it at the app level. I, I'm never going to get it. That's never going to happen. Never, never going to happen. Advertisers would be pissed. Well, but, yeah. But let's talk about Facebook. Facebook, the the people who go to Congress, the ones who leak your information, the one who know everything about you, now want a camera in your house so you can do the old Star Trek. Well, I guess it's like FaceTime, you know, esque yeah. thing. Get into the 21st century there, Kev. Video oh, calls are everywhere. <laughs> so you gonna buy one, Bobby? Signing up. No, the weird thing was is that we were watching, um, my wife and I were watching, uh, I think we were starting to get into Manifest. We could talk about that for a couple seconds in a bit too. Um, And we were watching it on demand through Sling TV or the app or whatever. Um, I think it was the app, the NBC app or something. And anyway, uh, in the commercial block, all of a sudden we see a a snippet, a blip of Facebook (laughs) <laughs> video commercial video call commercial and, and caroline and i were both like what the fuck was that like but i guess you know uh amazon has it with their show so why wouldn't facebook have it yeah, why wouldn't it be a natural extension of their platform will i buy one hell no but it seems to make sense <laughs> All right, Bob, this is the part where I tell you to find um, some crafty hold music so I can attend to my dog real quick. All right, maybe this is the end of the cold open because that'd be really long. Here we go. All right. I thought you said you're going to get rid of him. Well, she's in a crate. She's crate trained. She's in the crate. She sees the kids. She wants to get out and play. So I'm holding on to her right now. And we're back. And we're back. Yeah, so all my Twitter followers look pretty legit. That actually makes me disappointed right now. <laughs> um, I've been trying to actively change my content uh, to something else, um, to be honest. You know, I'm just, you know, programming is one thing. We used to do a ton of Embraco. I'm definitely diversifying, trying to do some artwork, trying to do the tech thing. Um, you know, I noticed something on Azure change today, you know, just tweeted something about that. I'm like, Ooh, that's gonna, that's gonna be juicy for Azure people. Uh, oh, see, we have, we have 19 hours ago, five hours ago, five hours ago. Did you, are those the models that you got the drawing? Yeah. Those, those are cool. Aren't they? Ass. Yeah. yeah, they are. I figure I can uh, make some cool poses and come up with some, I'm trying to mix up my art style. When I went to uh, Colorado, I had three guest artists use my iPad pro and they, uh, they kind of inspired me to kind of branch out a little bit and that's what I'm going to do. I'm a, I'm a big scribble guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, scrib- scribbling, uh, I think it's also called Jackson Pollock. What's more like, uh, vomiting colors on a canvas but whatever now nah, see like i like to take especially in those apps like i'll take 
just the watercolor brush and I'll do like a, a squiggle and then I'll do ink over the top of it, whatever the squiggle is. It's kind of like a war shock test or whatever it is for me every time. So yeah, and I won't ask you how to spell that because I won't I, know how to make sure you're right. <laughs> I draw I draw a lot of shit that way. Like I mean bad stuff. Like it's just not worth not worth publishing, not for prime time. All right. Um, let's see. What else is going on in the world? Of... So wait, let's go back to the Facebook oh. camera thing. Oh, yeah. What happens if all your relatives get one? I'm already off Facebook. I don't oh, care. Good point. <laughs> I don't care if they do it because I won't be doing it. So, but it is wait, interesting. Wait, 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 wait. We're not going to let this one go because I, I have a follow-up question for that because I did forget that you were off Facebook. So does your wife have Facebook? She does. Are you one of those guys who is now like watching Facebook over her shoulder and you're like, oh, scroll back to that picture. Who's that? Nope. Okay, good. I I have left Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, and I, I haven't looked back. I could care less. The only thing that's worse than that dude who looks over his wife's shoulder because he's, I don't know, somehow too cool to have Facebook is the the husband and wife Facebook. Okay. Oh, Yeah. The joint account. I don't get those. I don't either. It's I feel like there's creepy. a story behind each and every one of them. It's like, like it's a trust issue thing. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Every time I see one of those, I'm like, oh shit, one of those does not trust the other one. Yep, totally. I, I'm like, wow, I wonder what the story was. I wonder what old girlfriend or boyfriend got that one in trouble on Facebook. Yeah, I, I would even consider getting rid of Twitter, but I've kind of put most of my investment and energy in there. And I... And if I dial my give a shit back a bit, I find it more palatable. So I'm, I'm going to hold on to that one for now. Well, definitely, because that's one of the, like, I enjoy your content. So if you were going to get rid of Twitter, would you get rid of some of your parody accounts then? Or your parody Ooh. account? Ooh, uh, good question. So I, I don't think I'm sold on getting rid of Twitter. So I don't really think it's an, I don't have a valid answer for you. Hang on, I'm getting a text about the candy. Hmm, okay. Uh, uh -oh. Hang on, I'm going to pass that text along to my daughter because I'm busy right now. Wait, <laughs> this podcast is all about real life. We got dogs, we got candy. <laughs> this is why we normally record uh, when all that's a non-issue. But Kevin decided to say, roll it, hit the, hit the big red button, Bob. This is exactly like today's episode is exactly like the very first YouTube episode we did where we were just fucking around with Google Hangouts. And all of a sudden you're like, should we go live right now? <laughs> <laughs> and, yes. and episode one was born. Aww, the memories. You know, we're coming up on about a year. Aren't we? I think uh, end of November is our anniversary, is it not? Right around there. Uh, it was definitely getting cold. I know we yeah. had a few episodes under our belt and I think we got fancy right at New Year's or before New Year's. So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we're coming up very close to a year if not if not on it. Now, nah, I think we were in November. So very yeah. cool. Yeah, I think it was just before December 1st. So episode two or three might have been around December 1st. So yeah, we're about to have a birthday. Wow, those were, um, those were some amazing. I, I should probably, what I should do is I should repost the audio from episode one on our anniversary. That's what I should do. <laughs> Can we not? Bonus <laughs> nope. It'll be a bonus episode for all you cool cats out there that make it to uh, minute 35 in a regular podcast. A uh, couple weeks. Be looking for the original throwback episode one. Uh, I actually can't wait to listen to that because I don't even remember what we talked about. So did the uh, massive GitHub outage the other day affect you? <laughs> Uh, nope, because I didn't even know what happened. Was that the other day or was that a couple weeks ago? Um, it was last week. It was that probably was about they, a week ago. That was when they added a feature or something, right? And it didn't work out as planned? Yeah, I, well, I was reading the... Uh, they had some really good, like, oh shit notes uh, afterwards, uh, after action review or post-mortem, if you will. Um, they made those public? Yes. Um, in fact, if you go to the GitHub or just, yeah, it's on their blog. Well, they talk about it, which is good transparency. Basically, they said they were uh, changing some network <laughs> equipment. Uh oh, my dog. Uh, network equipment, and they had an oh shit moment. Some things didn't fail over. It was only like 48 seconds of like bad stuff that happened, but then they spent 
24 hours fixing it and then they had to take down web hooks so shit just wasn't that's working that's the part that i heard web hooks weren't working the next day that's what it was that's what got me because we're using um at uh, azure devops which has changed from vsts and uh nothing was hooking so none of the builds were going and i don't know even know if it's restored yet, because now that I think of it, I haven't had any tests <laughs> passed yet. <laughs> Usually I get a message to say, hey, your your tests are good to go and it's passed. So I probably should check up on that, Bob. So you're saying it's still not working? I'm saying it probably works now and I just, who knows, I probably got another, a new problem. So, uh, so that was the only thing that really affected you then, or did it even affect you? No, not at all. Okay. No. Um, it might have affected some of our projects in development, maybe, but oh, not me. Okay. Uh, my daughter is uh, taking my yeah. picture while I'm doing this because she came down to talk about candy. Uh, we'll do some hold music again. All right. Um, candy is... Wow, this is the worst episode ever. Um, <laughs> candy is... Out of your, the reusable grocery bag on the porch. So can you hand out candy until I'm done with this? Please? No, come on. Just sit on the porch for a while. Be a, be a champ. Be a mensch. Yeah, she, I told her to come down and I was so focused on you. She was standing in the doorway and took my picture and then texted it to me. Nice. Funny. All right, so, and we're back again. Yeah. So, so GitHub, yeah, GitHub didn't uh, didn't affect us at all. Um, we we don't have a massive like GitHub reliant infrastructure at all. Well, I think most people do, or at least Bitbucket, but I think GitHub's the heavyweight. And I saw they're now officially merged under the Microsoft. Yes, did see that thingy. So hopefully we really don't see much change because I mean, GitHub's run on rails. So, you know, non Microsoft technology. And as long as I don't have to log in with my live ID and this stupid Microsoft login, like, is this your organization account? Is this your personal account? (laughs) Oh my (laughs) gosh. So (laughs) that was my son's watch. Uh And we have an alarm in there now too. All right. So, you know, it's technology. Let's go ahead with it. This Verizon offers like a a Dick Tracy watch and it's limited. It's like five bucks a month and he can only call or text certain people. So that's his cell phone. What's that? That's his cell phone. That is his cell phone. That is correct. And he wears it as a wristwatch. That is badass. Yeah. And so that little noise you heard um, was an alarm he can set to like feed the pets, you know, things like do chores, stuff like that. Stop playing video games. <laughs> so, so what was what was that alarm for then? Uh, it was feed the pets. Definitely. It was a feed the pets. Feed the pets. Oh, yeah. So that's a cool little thing. Uh, definitely didn't have those when I was a kid. No, nope. my kids had Firefly, which was kind of cool. Same concept, but it wasn't a wristwatch. Gotcha. Um, hey, shoot. wait, let's loop back to Twitter because yeah. there was, there was something in Twitter that I wanted to talk about. Not about your account. Um, oh, good. Apparently, some time ago, they stopped posting your location when you tweeted. Really? And they removed that data. Well, because it was trackable and that's not good. GDPR implications, perhaps? Uh, I think it was safety implications more than anything else. Yeah, that's a good good idea. So, I mean, if you're stalking somebody and you know where they tweeted from six seconds ago, you can kind of start to follow them. Anyway, so they got rid of that practice. However, apparently, uh, just up until a couple of days ago, people were still actually able to get that information, even though it wasn't part of the published tweet. Well, that's fun because I got a message the other day. I don't know if you saw me tweet it. It's basically they said, oh, by the way, we your DMs were accidentally leaked to to other people. And by the way, it was only a very small percentage. And by the way, you were one of them. I'm like, oh, thanks, Twitter. Did we talk about anything special in our DM sessions? No, and I, oh. all, any, any texts, I, 
I really don't gossip on those. It's just basically supposed to be a private conversation. They don't have any picks that will disqualify me from uh, public service on there. So, I mean, I was just more annoyed than anything. But Well, there's a pretty low bar now for public service. So, don't <laughs> Yeah, that's that's true. Oh, speaking of which, uh, the can orange one. Can I call you Bart? Going. Bart Kavanaugh. Oh, too no. soon. Hashtag too no, soon. You can't. All right. Yeah, let's Sorry. move out of politics. Nope. Nope. You mentioned the orange, the the giant orange one. Oh, yes. he's coming to the the Wayne. Huh? He's coming to Fort Wayne on Monday, so I'm going to stay away from Fort Wayne, which is about 20 minutes from here. But I might actually see if um, I can catch an Air Force One flight because we're on the uh, track for the airport. So, How we'll do you see. know that they're going to use that flight path? Air Force One? Oh, that no. flight path? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I certainly okay. don't. Because um, that would be... That would be kind of a bad security leak. Secret you, Service, yeah. please don't come ask me questions. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, don't add us to Secret Service. Um, yes. There was, oh, Joe Biden was in uh, the Tri-Cities today. Tri-Cities? There's probably a dozen Tri-Cities. Well, my Tri-Cities. So we've got Batavia, Geneva, St. Charles. Uh, they were at the... Wait, wait isn't there like... Should it be like more like... Um, Center cities, like it's like a ton of little suburbs around here. There's like a hundred of them. <laughs> well, there's five in a row. We're bookended by Elgin and Aurora. They're the two big cities, and in between those, we have the tri cities of Saint Charles, Geneva, and Batavia. All right. So, what's new in the tri city area? Well, uh, Joe Biden was in town today, stumping for one of our uh, one of our uh, candidates at the uh, national level for. Uh, I think the House of Representatives, Senate. Mm, yeah, I don't know this, but anyway. I, I, I do believe that's why the the orange one is coming. Uh, yes, the big the same thing, because we have a uh, we have a senator up for election. He is uh, of the blue variety, so I believe uh, it would be in opposition to that person. And then the local representative is also up, and he actually is from Columbia City, and I do believe. He's trying to, you know, keep that job too. So we'll see how it goes. I'm anxious to vote next week. So we'll yes. see. So you're not an early voter person? Um, I could be, but apparently I'm not because I don't know how. I'm not either. I actually, uh, there's plenty of local locations where we can go and vote early. I just like to do it on the day. Oh, just like 4th July and Halloween. Don't be moving it. Exactly. As the Lord intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, shoot. Yeah. I've, I've been, oh, I've been reading. So I finished a book, uh, Ready Player One. Have you ever read Ready Player One? No. Full disclosure. I only read um, nonfiction uh, technical manuals, basically. That's, that's fair. I mix it up. So I've, I've read a kind of a good blend of fiction and nonfiction. So this one for the lay person and for you, uh, full disclosure, I thought it was some silly Steven Spielberg flick because apparently there was a movie named the same thing that just came out like last summer or the one before that. It's not based on the book? It is based on the book, but apparently oh, okay. they are worlds apart because this book, if I were to assign a movie rating to it, I would uh, give it probably an R because yeah, I was, I thought this was, this was a kid's book about video games. No, <laughs> no it's a dystopian yes. uh, book and it's um, quite amazing. And it was a really good read. And I, I read it cover to cover uh, on the flights uh, to and from Denver and uh, it was really good. So I totally recommend it. I'm, I'm looking for a new uh, book now. Uh, so I've been taking recommendations on Twitter. Yeah, I saw somebody recommended uh, Foot. Uh, it's a good recommendation. Whatever the uh, uh, person recommended. Oh, no, it's not in your timeline. Gosh darn it. It was another dystopian series. Uh, I think you'd like it. <laughs> What's the, um, like the Divergent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. I've seen the movies. I, I tend to not want to read anything. Sorry, I got a dog attacking a toy next to me. I tend to not read any books after I've seen the movie because um, movies are usually always a disappointment and it, obviously there's a spoiler alert. Right, especially if you layer characters and those characters have totally different paths. <laughs> yeah. 
Totally. Oh, you know what we haven't talked about? I've been doing lately crypto puzzles. Uh, we have not talked about the crypto puzzles. So, so what got you into that? Uh, my coworker, Taylor, um, he sent me a link a few weeks back and he's like, Hey, did you know you can get 310 Bitcoin for free as long as you solve this puzzle? Stop. Did you uh, solve it? Uh, no, but while we were attempting it, uh, somebody did, and that's $2 million for those uh, keeping track at home. That, well, uh, it was $2 million the other day when they won it. It's probably like <laughs> 1.5 now. <laughs> <laughs> Take the money now, cash it out, get your fiat, and then call it good. So that kind of inspired me and I've kind of felt like the old Nicholas Cage, uh, national treasure movies where, you know, you see a clue here and it leads you to another one, to another one. Well, that's kind of what I started doing with these puzzles where it's start here with this picture. There's a clue in this picture that will lead you to another one, another one, and finally to the end. And so I have two published right now. Um, that if you want to partake, you'd have to go to my Twitter and stalk me. That Twitter, that Twitter account that you're thinking about, shutting down yes that one um i'm not gonna shut it down but yes i've thought about it um i'm working on a third one it looks like a victorian scene like a like the cover of a clue board game uh, it's a murder mystery um i kind of got derailed by going to uh the retreat but i'll resume that one of these days when i'm not playing basketball or in a band uh, <laughs> or working out because my or ambition now it's getting swole yeah but I, well, I do the workout mostly during the week or during the weekdays before work right now. So that's kind of my time. But anyway, back to the crypto puzzles. Um, it's a mix of like AES encryption. You got to figure out what the key is, or it might just be simple uh, encoding something as an UTF-8 and you got to decode it, the binary to strings and, and things like that. Or you take the an image and then you apply a steganography filter to it and you pull out a secret message or another image within the image. So a lot of kind of cloak and daggers, uh, spy stuff. And, uh, I don't know, it's kind of fun. I've had a few people solve both of them, but, uh, oh, yeah, very cool. Yeah. I can't tell if people just don't care or they gave up or whatnot, but the ones who solve the puzzles, I think are hungry for more, which is interesting. Um, and then I had to give away a few clues on the first one because I kind of had to let people know what the hell these things are and why would you want to do it. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Crypto puzzles. Yeah, I just haven't caught the bug. I mean, I like to look at the pictures. I'm like, ooh, pretty picture. And then I'm like, well, nope, hey, here's, here's your motivation. The first two puzzles, zero reward. The third puzzle I'm planning on putting in uh, um, a few dollars worth of Bitcoin. So first one to get to it wins the money hmm. and and that's where the 310 bitcoin was um popular because there's literally two million dollars just waiting for somebody to pick up pick it up and this ties back into ready player one because the plot is essentially that there's a huge monetary prize at the end you just have to solve all the riddles and claim the prize first one to get there wins nice and so that's what i'm gonna do to sweeten the pot i'm gonna throw some bitcoin at it and um there's various ways to do it. So for instance, when you create a wallet, you can have an anonymous wallet and then you can have like a recovery key that goes with that. So essentially, right. You just give away the key, give away the, the key. And then somebody can say, wow, I now have access to this wallet with real Bitcoin and, and, and I'm inviting you to steal it. You know, so move this into your own account. <laughs> and so uh, there's a whole Reddit right up on people doing this. I don't have millions of dollars to do this. I have like uh, dozens of dollars to do this, if that. <laughs> dozens of pennies, dozens of cents um, of Bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> to give away. And uh, I don't know. It It's good, clean, fun, which is more the kind of the brand I'm trying to build for myself rather than uh, the same old, same old. And... Uh, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying to transcend technology instead of stick with one. I was looking at my my, my YouTube, which I haven't uploaded since February. I'm up to 600 some damn subscribers. <laughs> I get more subscribers doing nothing anymore <laughs> than making videos. Our channel's going up too. We're up to 104 again. Wow. Oh, we went down. Yeah. Yeah. We, we never dipped below 100, but we got back down to 100. Okay. And then uh, I've kind of done a postmortem of what is getting views and what isn't. 
Uh, you get a small group of like Umbraco CMS stuff, but the things that are really killing it are generic C sharp, te- you know, tutorials like my dependency injection, oh, solid, yeah. uh, things like that. So I'm going to dust off the old video chops here one of these days, but it probably won't be till I get into my new home, which by the way, they start next week. That's breaking news. Oh, nice. Yes. The race, and- the race is on. Yes. So, so for the lay listener at home, the race is between Bob and I. He is either going to translocate to a amazing place in the world first, or I'm going to be in a fancy new house I can't afford first. Which <laughs> one of the two will happen? <laughs> yes, I will. You'll you'll beat me because I can't move until high school is over for Lillian. So, well, weather pending is every builder's favorite get out of jail free card. <laughs> do, we, do we know what the winter is going to hold for us? Do, are we, there Predictions? We don't, but once you get a foundation and and some framing in, you know, you're good to go. It's right. it's those critical paths right there. However, I'm totally dying to help you move out to uh, Colorado. <laughs> I told Caroline that last night, and she's like, "Done. He's in." All right. So yeah. So I'm looking at your looking at your YouTube channel here. I'm a little sad that uh, the Black Mirror episode Umbraco Edition capped out at 370. Yeah, you know. I don't have a whole lot of Umbraco stuff that's high. The high, I think the highest one is uh, stacked content versus nested content. Like besides, there's some archetype ones and, and things like that. But um, I don't know that p- a ton of people are coming uh, to YouTube for that sort of thing. I know they have their own video channels and whatnot. And Paul Seal's got some great content too. So, um, yeah, uh, Hot Wings six sixteen. Yeah, that 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 and the Black Mirror one just kind of petered out really yeah. we would have to well, have a social media blitz on those again or have a uh, maybe part two you uh, should definitely throw back to those for sure i like the things to do at work too but that only got 115 That's yeah it's i'm real disappointed at it, it's it's the standard thing the ones you think will do well don't the ones that you're like on a whim let me just do one of these is like killing it so your OBS two one six thirteen not bad not bad. Yeah, I've got one that's close to ten thousand, which is uh, not bad for about a year um, um, of effort. But I'm still uh, still pulling in zero dollars on YouTube because I'm under the threshold that they keep moving. And it is my prediction once I hit the threshold to be able to monetize again, they will move, move the carrots. Oh yeah. <laughs> So that's about my level of give a shit on YouTube um, because I'm li- literally living in a basement right now. I, I just don't have the willpower, the, the time, the sets, any of that to make some new videos. Cause I don't like to just do like, here's my desktop videos. I like to be on camera and like talk to people. Um, and so I'm just not really set up for that right now. Plus all my household goods live in a storage unit. Yep. It's the transient lifestyle. Yes, absolutely. You know what we haven't done? We haven't disclaimed everything we've said today. We better do that for the lawyers to come at us. Yo, for sure. Uh, wow, the lawyers, that's frightening. So yeah. the uh, views and opinions of Bob and Kevin of the Bob and Kevin show are exclusively the opinions of Bob and Kevin and not for any of the people that they might possibly work for. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, I think that'll work. I don't, I don't think uh, many people I work with listen to this. And if they did, they would be like, whatevs. But no, uh, I think, uh, I think my work people got bored cause we weren't like, <laughs> I was throwing them off the trail. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We got off the YouTube. They don't understand podcasting there. So gotcha. Uh, that's terrible. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Um, so technology related, have you seen the headlines where um, Mr. Musk and Tesla are being investigated for for uh, misrepresenting production numbers and things uh, like that? I've seen Elon saying that uh, he removed all of his Tesla credentials from his account or something. But what? Yeah. What uh, like he probably doesn't have on his bio anymore that he's the president and CEO of Tesla Motors or something like that. That's what I was hmm. assuming. But, Boy, uh, uh, they can't catch a break, and it's probably due to their own or Mr. Musk's own actions. But holy crap, you can't yeah, you can't win over there. Though, like the the reporting of numbers, he's got to just believe whoever told it to him. So 
maybe there's a culture of fear and somebody lied and somebody lied and somebody lied and then it got to him and he's like, hey, look at this. Brag, brag, brag. Even if that's true, the buck stops there. Right. It always stops at the top. He's had a rough time. There's no doubt about it. He's Oh, yeah. He's not he's not living high on the hog right now. I mean, he still is living high on the hog. He's just had a rough stretch. And uh, I, I just checked with the interns. Um, Elon has declined our request to come on the show um, due to the fallout with Rogan. He says he would have if it weren't for like all the <sighs> clap back. You know, he, he got a lot of bump there, but he's, he has <laughs> turned us down officially. But uh, we will keep everyone in the loop if that changes. Yeah, he's staying out of the podcast public eye for a while. That's okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, other tech related, but just non our tech. Did you see Kepler telescope is now dead in the water? I did see that. And it ran out of fuel. And how crazy is it that they're just, I mean, I guess you'd be like, yeah, we're going to put X number of fuel and that's it. But there, nobody decided, you know, hey, one day we might have the ability to refuel this bastard. Let's but, at least. But do we? Do we have the ability to refuel it? We can We can refuel jet fighters and giant planes in mid-flight. Um, right. And we can f- refuel a uh, orbiting station. But is that an orbiting station? Well, yeah, it is. And it's in low Earth orbit. It's not like it's terribly far oh. out there. Oh. But, so what we don't have is space shuttles because we put glasses on Hubble famously, right? When right. Can see, we put glasses on it. Well, okay, we had a space shuttle set up there. But what we apparently don't have the ability to do is send man mission, which, you know, I understand why we don't have space shuttle. But in the era of, hey, contact Microsoft for your artificial intelligence and blah, blah, blah <laughs> solutions, apparently we don't have the technology to refuel a spacecraft, but we can certainly tell this picture is a hamburger or not. So it's good job, world. We're on the right track. I bet you SpaceX could do it. I bet you anyone. Well, Depends if the, so I guess it would have had to started with, does it have the ability? Is there a gas door? You know, is there something that someone can show up? There's probably not a, it's probably a fuel cell that would have to be, you know, it's almost like built it around it. It's almost like Apple and some manufacturers sealing the battery in. Why would you ever want to change this thing up? Well, um, Okay. <laughs> Whatever. It's built it as disposable technology. I get it. But th- doesn't that blow your mind? Right. I mean, it's like, why would you do that? Have we not learned anything in 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 the past sixty years of space flight to go, you know what? We should probably just in case, how do we future proof this? We may not have the technology today, but we'll have it in the future. But I even think that's kind of a false claim because we had the technology back then to refuel it. Right. Did we not? Well, but 98%, like if you look at the entirety of our space program, 98% of it's disposable technology. Yeah, so there, you can go to the uh, website that shows all the space junk orbiting Earth right now. And uh, I've always heard Neil deGrasse Tyson say, you know, they ask him about aliens, and he always retorts, well, you mean Earth, the one with all the space junk, and you can't even really get to <laughs> us? You'd have to risk your UFO from colliding with all this junk? Earth, it's the yeah. best safety shield ever. I know, right? Garbage um, shields up. Starting with Sputnik, that's the first piece of space trash. Actually, that's probably falling back to Earth now. But, you know, we've, we've had space trash for 60 years. And, you know, at some point, you'd think we'd want to have a, just like a giant net <laughs> to collect all this crap and recycle it, but you can't really recycle it because it's just going to burn up in the atmosphere anyway. So yeah, pretty weird. Ooh, speaking of space, have you seen First Man, the movie? No. Not not a not a Moonwalker kind of doesn't get you excited. I just, I, I'm just not a big like I don't get out to see movies. That's weird. Oh man. Well, I'm, you know what you need. I live in a basement for a long enough period of time <laughs> where you're like. Get me the hell out of here. Oh, a movie. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it was I good. There in go. a very special mood to go see a movie. Not going to lie. Oh, man. I've seen so many movies lately. It's um, quite expensive to go to the movies. Maybe that's why I don't go. That's probably the real reason. It costs a lot of money. Yeah, it's, it's I, a I, good I time with the family, me. though. Well, I mean, there's yeah, plenty of junk food. You have to remember, my family is not like around. I mean, 
my daughter works her butt off, so she's very rarely home. And Man. when she is, we're about hanging out. Not and you're, hanging you're out. telling me you don't want to meet me somewhere an hour and a half from Batavia to go watch some movie, Bob? <laughs> Just say no. It'd have to be along the lake shore, right? It'd have to be up north. Like Oh, totally. We're trying to figure out where 90 minutes, so we'd probably be South Bend, right? I think mileage wise, I would I would be able to travel farther in the same amount of time because you have what time of day it was though. Is South Bend really on your track? Because I was thinking more like a US thirty. Uh, now we're getting really local. Uh, you know, like uh, shoot Hammond area, right? Valpo, right Valpo, there. exactly. I can so, make Valpo in like an hour and twenty. Really? Yeah. All right. All right, Bob. Bring the light.